When I tell people that this is the largest jazz archives in the world, they're usually shocked. <laughs> they're usually surprised. I guess one reason is because it's located in, in an institution like Rutgers University. We have a very comprehensive jazz collection. You have scores, you have photographs, sound recordings, correspondence. These are ways in which you can get to know someone. This is a case that's full of the instruments of great jazz musicians. If you were to ask me to compare IJS with uh, another major archive, it would be Cooperstown because you have this fan base of, of scholars and people who, whether it's baseball or jazz, it's part of the tapestry of their life. We're listening right now to uh, the so-called Smith-Jones recordings from 1936 and you're actually hearing his first professional recording date on this horn. We have a lot of unique collections here uh, that you won't find any place else. We have the world's largest collection of jazz journals and these are journals from all over the world, so you don't have to go all over the world. You don't, you don't have to go to France to see a journal from France. We have it. The difference between having books on a subject and items that document that subject is it's a very different experience to look at someone's handwriting, you know, they're writing about, you know, being on the road and, oh, I miss you, I miss home. You can see life through those people's eyes. So it's about making a connection with the artist. <laughs> There are many things that are uniquely American, but few that have been such a major international cultural export. It is an important music. It's America's contribution to world culture. Food, water, sex, and jazz. I mean, it's just one of the essentials of this life.